Hey guys, I'm Jameson with Rogue Engineer, and today I'm finally getting around to building out my dream workshop. So, let's get started. So this is my dream workshop, and I've always wanted to kind of get to this level to where we could start putting cabinets and finished countertops and whatnot in here. So the first thing I started with was this wall right here. I needed some tool storage and whatnot, so we started with the Husky base cabinets. I've got one of the one, two, three, four, five drawer, one, two, three, four, five drawer cabinets, and then one with one drawer and then the double doors on the bottom, and then we've got uppers above that. So we started on that wall. Um, However, the cabinets weren't quite tall enough. I think if you add the casters to the bottom of it, it would bring it up to an appropriate level. However, what I ended up doing was building a platform out of two by fours below it. And then I've got some black vinyl over there that we're gonna wrap that, that platform with later to, to make it disappear. With that out of the way, then we can move on to the main um, work surface where my miter saw and the Craig Foreman pocket hole machine is gonna be built into the counter. To start, I figured out the spacing on the lower cabinets. Now those again are gonna be those black Husky cabinets and we space those out accordingly to fit all of the necessary things in between those cabinets. Those are also gonna support the countertop so we needed to make sure that they were perfectly level all the way across the whole work surface. To do so, I used a laser level and made sure that each one of those cabinets was spot on front to back and side to side. With the cabinets all level, then I started building the structure that's gonna support the actual work surface. Now the structure is built out of two by fours and I spaced those studs about 16 inches on center. Those are gonna be supported by the cabinet as well as mounted into the studs in the wall. With that done, then I moved on to the upper cabinets, getting those mounted and followed up by making the work surface. Now the actual work surface is gonna be three quarter inch MDF. I went ahead and cut that down to fit and return into the window sills, which actually worked out perfectly. And then we're gonna laminate that with a, um, a matte white laminate sheet. So I want to take a second to thank our sponsor for this project, Husky Tools. We could not have built this workshop without them and their cabinets. But beyond just garage storage cabinets and so on and so forth, they also offer high quality tools. And the best thing about their tools is that they also are willing to back those with a lifetime warranty. So if you ever break anything, take it back to Home Depot and they'll exchange it for a new one. My favorite features about the garage cabinets are the black on black look, as well as the slow closed drawers and doors. Beyond that, they're just super easy to install and they look great in the shop. And they also have this 27 inch rolling tool chest, which is perfect for staining and sanding. A couple other tools they sent me were some six in one multifunction pliers, which are great for electrical work. They've got long nose for getting and working in tight spaces, as well as being able to strip wire and shorten screws. As well, they sent me a 26 piece hex key set with ball end, which is great because for one, it's made out of real steel, but it also, that ball end allows you some flexibility as far as being able to tighten up screws on up to like a 25 degree angle. So if you wanna learn more about Husky Tools, make sure you head on over to homedepot.com. I've got a link in the description. The lamination process is actually fairly simple. Um, on homedepot.com, they've got tons of laminate options. I went with, like I said, matte, or matte white. 
Um, it's just a nice bright work surface and um, I'm gonna be able to write down notes on it and erase those very easily. However, they've got tons of options on Home Depot from wood grains and um, stone looks and so on and so forth. Essentially, this is a Formica countertop, but we're using that MDF instead of a particle board. Now, as far as the lamination process itself, it's fairly straightforward. We used DAP's Weldwood Contact Cement, which is perfect for this application. Essentially, you lay the two surfaces over and you coat them both with a nice even coat and then you let that set up for 15 to 20 minutes and then you bond them together, set them on top of each other. Um, and you're gonna need two people to do this because once you lay it down, it is stuck in place. And we use a scrap two by four to be able to work that laminate into and squeeze out all the air from the inside to the out of the work surface. And last but not least, we came back with a, a trim router and used just a flush cut bit um, and ran around, you wanna go counterclockwise around the work surface and cut that excess laminate off. Now, I've been partnering with DAP for some time now and their wood glue as well as their premium wood filler are awesome products. Now, this is the first time that I've actually been able to use their Weldwood contact cement and I love it. The process of being able to laminate countertops is actually really easy to do and it gives us a really nice work surface. So I can definitely see using this as something in the future. If you wanna find out more about DAP products, make sure you head on over to dap.com. I'll put a link in the description. With the tops all cut to size, then we can move on to installing those. And the way that we installed them was actually by adhering them to those two by four platforms that we built earlier. For that, we used DAP's DynaGrip Heavy Duty Max and clamped it in place to make sure that there were no voids. As far as hiding those two by four platforms that we used for the countertops, we wanted to wrap everything in something that was gonna be durable, so for that we chose oak. Now I went with a one by six oak and I had to cut that down to about five inches in order to cover everything that we needed to without blocking those cabinets. Then we cut them down to the appropriate length and then we glued them in place with DAP's Weldwood wood glue and nailed them with 23 gauge pin nails. Those pin nails are used just to kind of hold them in place while that glue sets up and that's what's really gonna hold that trim. To finish off the trim, we came back with the trim router and used a roundover bit to give a nice ease edge, as well as I used my hand planer to knock down any of the high spots. With the exact height of the finished countertop, then I could start building the platforms for my Craig Foreman um, pocket hole machine, as well as the miter saw itself. Those were built the same way that we built the platforms for the countertops two by four platforms, then we secured them to the back wall, figuring out exactly the height that we needed to. And then we came back and trimmed out the front with that oak board. I also have a dust collection attachment for below the miter saw that actually worked out perfectly. So I went ahead and cut the hole for that and installed that. And that's just gonna be for future dust collection to try and mitigate any of that dust particulate floating around. Now, the cabinets are awesome as far as being able to hide tools and, and different things that we use around the shop and kind of keeping them out of view and making it all nice looking. However, I wanted to allow for quick access to some commonly used tools like impact, our impact drivers, screw guns, and nailers, and so on and so forth. So what I did was I built a plywood unit to go on both sides of the miter saw. This is going to also act as the side shields for the miter box itself to prevent the dust or kind of keep that dust. 
as well as house all of those tools that I just talked about. With all the measurements figured out, then we cut those boards down to size, we edge banded the edges um, that were going to be seen from the front, as well as we cut some dados in there to allow for quarter inch dividers between each tool. Again, I couldn't have done this without the help of our sponsor, Home Depot and Husky Tools. The Husky products that we've been able to put in the shop are really cool. I love the matte black cabinets and it just adds a nice little touch to the shop. As always, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you hit that one right there. And if you want the full blog post on this project, make sure you hit that link right there. Until next time, be safe and happy building.